Okay, 5b, they give us tangent is equal to 8 fifteenths, but it tells us that sine is less than zero. Okay, so now it doesn't come out and tell us exactly what quadrant we're in. So before we draw the triangle on this and label the sides, we have to first figure out what quadrant it's in. Now we have tangent is positive and sine is less than zero. So when we draw something like this, we want to go around all the quadrants. Now we want to use all students take calculus to figure out what sign it's in. So all means everything's positive in the first quadrant. Students, we mean sign's positive, uh, everything else would be negative. Take, T means tangent's positive, everything else is negative. That's the one that we want. We want a quadrant where tangent is positive and everything, sign is negative. That's this one. So we want to draw our, our triangle in the fourth quadrant, and again we did that for using the all students take calculus way to, to see what's positive and what's negative in the quadrants. Okay, now theta is going to be here. Okay, and so make that look a little bit clearer here. Okay, and then we have the tangent is 8 fifteenths. So tangent definition is opposite over adjacent. So opposite this angle where the theta is, opposite would be 8 and adjacent would be 15. But you got to be careful. Remember, you're in the third quadrant here. So if you're in the third quadrant, each of these need to be negative. It's very important again to get your signs correct which quadrant you're in. If you're in the uh, third quadrant, the x and the y coordinates are both negative. Negative 8 over negative 15 would still give you positive 8 15, so it's still going to be correct. We just have to put those negatives there. Last thing we want to do is figure out what the missing side is. So we're going to use our x squared, a per, a squared plus b squared equals c squared. That's our Pythagorean theorem. Now this time we don't know what the c value is because that's the side opposite the right angle. We don't have that. So this time we are going to solve for c. For the other two, we have negative 8 squared and negative 15 squared. Both of these will become positive, so we're going to get positive 64, 225. Add that together, you're going to get 289 squared at both sides. And remember, you're going to get plus or minus on that, but if you have a hypotenuse, hypotenuse is always positive regardless of what quadrant you're in. So it's positive here, we're going to use positive 17. Now that that's complete, we can again fill in this using the definitions. Now 17 is going to be hypotenuse. Across the triangle from the theta, this is our opposite side, so negative 8 is opposite. That means that the adjacent side would be negative 15. Well, we use the definitions to put that in. Sine is equal to opposite over hypotenuse. So opposite would be negative 8 over hypotenuse 17. So negative 8 17ths. For cosine, cosine is equal to the adjacent over hypotenuse. Adjacent is negative 15 over hypotenuse. Negative 15 over 17. Tangent is equal to opposite over adjacent. That's the same thing as the reciprocal of tangent, so we'll just use the reciprocal of that one, and that's going to be 15 over 8. These other two are going to be reciprocals. Cosecant is reciprocal of sine. Negative 8, uh, negative 17 eighths. So yeah, let's flip, flip this here. Okay, so negative 17 eighths. And this is going to be negative 17 fifteenths. So this type of problem in the test, you'll either have one that has uh, some square roots. We have to work with that. Or you might have one like this uh, where you have uh, integers for all the sides.